Every nation in creation has its favorite drink. France is famous for its wine, its beer in Germany. Turkey has its coffee, and they serve it black of an ink. Russians go for vodka, and England loves its tea. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Tea and Toast with me, Lewis Bunnell, and my good friend David Pinner. In this week's episode, and on the back of a very busy pack cease, we're doing things a little bit differently, and have decided to talk about two games instead of the usual one. Both of these titles have seen huge queues at PAX East and are on most people's calendars as eagerly anticipated titles for 2015. The first is Gigantic, which is Matiga's first ever game, and if you've never heard of it, it's a sort of blend between MOBAs and massively multiplayer games, and it all goes into one big fat melting pot to form an awesome competitive hybrid. Best of all, it does away with creeps and itemization, and instead players battle against giant guardians. Each team has their own respective guardian which they have to protect, with the winning team killing the opposing one. It's super simple, but just like most MOBAs, there's loads of depth in the heroes that players can play, with many of them filling a variety of roles. At the moment, there's 16 heroes in total, with Wu and Ashling the latest additions to the roster. You might have noticed from some of the gigantic footage that's playing in the background, the game looks absolutely awesome. It has a unique art style, the animations are slick, and despite being in alpha, it's already incredibly polished. Best of all, Matiga now have plenty of muscle behind them after pairing with Microsoft to exclusively release the game on Windows 10. Not only that, but it'll also be free to play when it launches later this year. The second game that we're discussing today is Guild Wars 2's Heart of Thorns. It's the first official expansion pack from ArenaNet and it sees players travel into the heart of Maguma. There's a new profession, the Revenant, an entirely new area that is enormous in size and comes with three layers, as well as a brand new profession system called Specializations, and this will allow players to effectively become something else. The Ranger, for example, can specialize to become a Druid. On top of that, there's Guild Halls, Sabotage, which is the equivalent of Guild vs. Guild, which we've all been waiting years for, and some huge changes to World vs. World. It's an enormous expansion pack, and there's still so much that we don't know. But considering the fact that ArenaNet have slashed the price of the game repeatedly over the last few months, there should be plenty of players throwing money at their screen in anticipation for this game. So, for the next 10 minutes, David and I will tell you exactly why we're excited about these games and why they should be on your radar for 2015. So, David, there's two games on our radar at the minute that are due for release at some point this year. The first is Gigantic and the second is Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns. The question we're answering today is why should people be interested in either of these games? And I think to kick us off, we'll start with Gigantic. Yeah, Gigantic's awesome. Um, there's not a lot out about it yet, but what is out there shows it as being a really, really compelling sort of um, arena third-person shooter um, that I definitely think has a large space to move around within the market. Um, there isn't really um, a solid arena third-person shooter right now. Um, and there isn't specifically like a, a third person sort of arena brawler uh, slash shooter outside of Smite. Um, but Smite's limitation is, is that it doesn't have a z-axis, like everything is glued to the ground. Hmm. I think if anyone's been to PAX South and they've, they've had some hands on time with Gigantic and obviously we covered it here at Ten Ton Hammer, it sort of straddles the middle ground between the likes of typical massively multiplayer movement combined with smite minus the creeps and instead of the creeps we've got these two hulking heroes at one side of the map that you have to attack or defend yeah it's got like this interesting mix of like all these different elements of like what people want it's kind of like this this amazing soup broth that's just layered with different flavors right you've got this raid component of these two raid bosses that are are, are, are dueling for superiority and then you have, like you said, the MMO type movement and skill system where, you know, it's it's just, you know, like you're playing Dark Age of Camelot or Guild Wars 2 or WoW, and you're, you're moving around like, you know, your character's your character, even though it theoretically isn't. Um, 
And then it's got, you know, it, it's, it's got that MOBA element of where you are two teams fighting for, you know, um, I guess you could say map dominance. Um, but then at the same time, it doesn't have all the other things that come with all of these things. So it's not a persistent world. It's not uh, a MOBA. There aren't creeps. Uh, and there isn't... Um, and it isn't like a raid where it's like evolve and there's there's something controlling these big things other than just a, a, a very basic AI. I, I think it takes some of the best elements of a lot of online game genres and just puts it in the same pot. Yeah, I think that's what I love so much about Gigantic is the fact that it just drops all the baggage and it comes with some of the best things. Like you said, you there's no creeps because that's an element of the MOBA that just pisses me off because it's just a repetitive grind to actually nuke those down and level up. It also gets rid of all the itemization from the MOBA and massively multiplayer games and it's just heroes stripped back. These is these are the skills that they've got it's a limited action set and it's you against other opponents and your skill and if you're more skilled than someone else then you, then obviously uh, w working as a team um you'll likely win i mean i'm big on pvp i play a lot of um, massively multiplayer pvp whether it's in wildstar or or guild wars 2 or even world of warcraft and gigantic sort of fits in that niche between the likes of Dota 2, Smite and, and Guild Wars 2 uh, to the point where I think for me it would actually displace me playing those games and I would simply for my PvP fix um, stick with Gigantic. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it could be even a thing where we, we're going to get to this point where PvP and MMO PvE are going to be just two separate games and people that want pve will play an mmo and people that want pvp will play these these games that take sort of like the the thing guild wars the original guild wars had where all characters are the same you know this is just a a, a multiplayer battlefield um and your skills what's going to shine through so it really the, feels like go on Lewis. so i was, was going to say on the subject of guild wars 2 it's obviously the other topic that we wanted to discuss today and obviously we're trying to keep it within this 10 minute time frame why do you see guild wars 2 heart of thorns as a game that's on your radar this year alongside gigantic well first off i mean guild wars 2 is pretty much the best MMO out there i mean we gave a game of the year twice um and if, if you're if you're wanting to play a game that's made, you know, recently, that's, you know, fun, you're going to play Guild Wars 2, and Heart of the Thorns does exactly what I wanted the original Guild Wars 2 to be, which is take a lot of the elements from the original Guild Wars, spruce them up, and put them into a new game, uh, which is where you got Strongholds and, you know, Guild Halls, which is essentially GVG, like... I mean, what more could you ask for in anything with the, the tag Guild Wars other than, you know, Guild Wars? <laughs> I think for me, what appeals with Heart of Thorns is that ArenaNet have finally stepped back, uh, had a shot of coffee, and realised that a lot of the bullshit excuses they were coming up with for not doing stuff, they've actually backtracked on and gone ahead and done it. I mean, I... I petitioned for years for for things like dies to be account wise, will be worlds experience to be account wide, um, you know, a, a much greater emphasis on account wide items, so there isn't that that sort of grind between your alt characters, and and finally they sort of cave to the the Guild Wars 2 community and implemented those things. Fast forward a couple of years to this expansion pack, and they're doing it yet again, and they've realised, you know what? guild halls are a good idea and we've finally done it first person camera we've finally done it final heavy profession we've finally done it and all these things have actually stacked on top of each other to make a really appealing expansion pack that people are going to be willing to to part with their money for i think the really important thing too is it brings the social element back into guild wars where you do now want to have a guild and a team because the original guild wars was all about your guild like if you didn't have a guild you were nothing you weren't part of the meta because without a guild you couldn't play the meta you could make a pickup group and you could suck but now it's going to be you know that social element that makes massively multiplayer online games so much fun it's going to be back because people are going to want to you know form guilds and and you know battle as a guild against each other or more specifically as a team on stronghold 
And yeah, exactly. Arena Net, you know, that's what Guild Wars is popular for. And it's just amazing they're taking these concepts and finally adding them to Guild Wars 2. Like Gigantic, this is a really good example, is taking a lot of the good things from other genres and putting it in their games, which isn't in any capacity a bad thing. So, you know, like Taunt coming, that's not a bad thing. It's not bad to have Taunt. You can do really creative and interesting things with the mechanic. You don't specifically have to do, you know, EverQuest or World of Warcraft type stuff. But there are good things, and you can combine them for very interesting and new mechanics. You just don't have to snub your nose at it. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to, is the fact that for a long time, ArenaNet have sort of turned a blind eye to these requests. And Taunt is a really good example, because they, they were staunchly... Uh, in many respects, against a sort of uh, rigid structure when it came to combat. Um, and Taunt wasn't added to the game because they, they wanted every class to have its own role. And I think they missed a trick because uh, a lot of the PV PvE content has suffered because of the fact that players have no ability to control what's going on. And, and with the addition as well, um, with the break bar, uh, the defiance buff on bosses, it, it's... it's feels like the game is finally turning a corner where uh, ArenaNet are, are happy, to, well I wouldn't say happy but are willing to admit that they've made some errors along the way and Heart of Thorns is sort of trying to make up for that in terms of content and, and combat. Yeah, for me I definitely think Heart of Thorns could potentially be a huge genre changer just in the fact that it is sort of like the WoW Killer formula where it's going to have all of these satisfying mechanics and, and a really pretty wrapper. Um, and then, like, taunt, like, I, I completely agree. I mean, you can have taunt, but it doesn't mean you have a warrior who's taunting and tanking. Mm. I mean, it's a control mechanic. I mean, I, th I think the only concern I have with Heart of Thorns at the minute is gigantic. And you, you've obviously mentioned um, the new Guild vs. Guild um, game mode. Uh, I honestly think at this point Gigantic would pull me away from playing Guild Wars 2's PvP, but the Heart of Thorns content would keep me playing its PvE, and I think that would be fine, but that's not necessarily what ArenaNet want, um, but I think a lot of people, if they are into PvP, they like Guild Wars 2's PvP, uh, and they find the time to play Gigantic at one of the new up-and-coming events, then they might find themselves in the same position. So that's it for this week's Tea and Toast. If you're interested in either Gigantic or Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, do let us know in the comments below. And as always, you can drop David and I a tweet at any time and we will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to hit the like button and we'll see you next week. Every nation in creation has its favourite drink. France is famous for its wine, its beer in Germany. Turkey has its coffee and they serve it black of an ink. Russians go for vodka, and England loves his tea.